When it comes to Amazon PPC, there's a lot of things you need to avoid doing or you're going to make some costly mistakes. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. We're going to dive straight into the top five PPC mistakes that I see that are consistently made. So let's dive into my account here. First thing you're going to notice, I have spent over $691,000 of my own money on PPC, generating $1.4 million. And this is just the PPC revenue not to account for uh, the revenue on the account. So I'm a seven figure seller uh, and I've been doing this for years. So when we look at a typical campaign, the first mistake that I'm gonna bring up is negating good keywords off of the auto and the broad match campaigns. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. If we go into, uh, let's see this, let's, let's go last 65 days. So you guys get kind of an idea, the last 30 days that'll work and give you an idea of what one of the campaigns could look like. And we're gonna search for a broad match. And I do recommend segmenting and naming all of your, your things because it comes in handy. So this one's done 400 and spend 1,000 in sales. So let's check that one out, it's doing okay. And when we go in here, uh, you'll notice we only have one ad group, we only have one, you know, a, a very specific type of targeting. But when we go to negative keywords, you don't see anything. And that could be good, that could be bad, right? You can also negate things down at the ad group level. Let's see if we got, so we have negations right here. So when we go look at the targeting, right? Here's the nine keywords. I don't recommend adding any more keywords than 20 keywords. That's a bonus tip for you right there. Mistake uh, we often see. And when we look at shooting target stand or adjustable target stands, we're going to see different results here. Our best one, steel target stand right there. And we probably ought to bring our bid up as you can see that right there. So I'm going to make a quick adjustment and get closer to that because the A cost is significantly better there. Uh, all right, so you get an idea of where we're looking at here. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to search terms. This is something uh, that you guys should be looking at frequently. And in here, if we found a good keyword, so let's see if we can find a good keyword. We're gonna expand this just a tiny bit more to the last 65 days. And a good keyword example would be like one of these three here, the 28%, 29 and 13%. So Mistake number one that I see is that people use broad match or auto campaigns as discovery campaigns, take like the word steel target stand, which is doing phenomenal for me. And then they negate it right here. They'll hit this negate button like this, and then they'll go make a new campaign. And that is a terrible, terrible Charles, Charles Barkley mistake, right? Like it, it is so terrible because this campaign under broad match will almost guaranteeingly have a lower ACoS than that exact match campaign. And it has data already. When something is doing good and has data, leave it the crap alone. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't mess with it. Speaking of negations, here's mistake number two. Not adding negations once a week. So when you come in here and you look at things and you say, oh, I've spent 23 clicks there, 30 clicks there, you may want to add that as a negation. You can see here, we've already added this one as a negative. This one right there has got high, high wild. Now this could be because that's a branded keyword. So let's go check it out. Let's go over to Amazon. Cause I've, I've, I don't know. I don't really pay attention to my competition and it is. So you can see high wild right there. So pretty safe to say, if I type in the word high wild, we're going to see a few of these show up. And if I have zero sales and like, I don't know, 50 clicks across down the line, 122 clicks. Actually, overall, I'm doing pretty good. 36% ACoS. I was expecting to not do good. So that's kind of weird. So why, why am I failing on that specific keyword? So what is it that my product is not delivering? So I actually have no idea. So I'm going to go click on it um, and, and see like, why is mine not doing good? So it is a target stand base for target practice. You can hang paper. So why is this keyword high wild adjustable target stand base for paper shooting targets cardboard? I can't honestly tell 
why that particular one isn't doing good. But you'll notice these bolded keywords, this is something new in Amazon search, they're bolding your keywords that you search for, is clearly part of their title. And this is clearly what they're looking for. And I really doubt whole, oh, we do, we show up uh, lower on the page there. So I'm kind of surprised by that. And, you know, it's kind of interesting to see like how our picture selection looks versus theirs, right? Who's going to win that? I, honestly, I think High Wilds looks better. Probably action that after this video shoot. And so when we look at the negations, this one's tricky. This is actually a really tricky one because overall I'm actually doing good on high wild, but that particular keyword, not so hot. So I think what I'm going to do is add that long tail as a negative exact match because I've got 23 clicks. That's, that's enough data to let me know. It's probably not going to work. Um, but what's really interesting. Okay. How, how did that happen? You see how there's like, is that a duplicate? What's the difference between those two? Interesting. I definitely don't want that negated. So, I don't, uh, shoot, let's go over to the negative targeting because that one has 29% ACOS. I'm so confused how that search term. Okay, so what's happened, I think what's happening here is it's coming off of two different keyword broad match sources. And when somebody targets high wild off of adjustable, it doesn't work. But when they don't use the word adjustable, it does work. So this is a very interesting use case. I'm very surprised by, by the situation. I'm definitely not going to want to negate it. However, what we're, what we're seeing here is it's, it's the word adjustable specifically that is causing my problem. So maybe the consumers don't feel like my product is as adjustable. So if we look at adjustable and it's still 36% a cost. So this is a really interesting situation. And I, I really went down the rabbit hole on this one, but, but my point in trying to make here on point number two is come in and add negations once a week. Now you might run into a situation like I just did where you, you think you need to negate something and then you back out. You're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't do that. So I, I, I don't want to negate anything related to high web. So that's, that's, a, that's a learning, that's an interesting thing. So as we scroll down, is there anything else that looks unusual, right? I don't have anything over 40% ACOS, which is good. Um, pretty dang good, actually. So is there something else in here that's not doing good? So we've already negated shooting target stand. Um, target stand might be a little too generic for us. The two by four target stand. So I, th I think this is a tricky one because uh, it, looks like, it looks like we may be targeting uh, multiple sizes here. And so that keyword is not appropriate for this campaign. So, and we, well, I, I'm, I'm kind of kind of floating back and forth here. I think maybe what happened is we like loaded some new SKUs and then got rid of some. So, so these are the only two that are really targeted, but you see how there's a one by two and a two by four in this list. And, and so a keyword that is specific to a size should not be in a campaign that we're, we're targeting multiple products with different sizes, or we're going to run the risk of wasting cash because somebody will click on it. Oh, that's not what I was looking for. I was looking by two by four. Right. And yours is one by two. So yeah, I'm, I'm out. So you waste some clicks and that's exactly what we're seeing right here. And so I'm going to add that as a negative. We really don't want any two by four showing up on this particular campaign. However, here, here we have the exception yet again. So, uh, I, I feel confident though, that the phrase two by four needs to be negated. So we're going to negate that and I need to negate this as a, as a phrase specifically because all of the combinations of two by four are not ideal. And then what I'm going to do to fix this situation is I'm going to take this two by four product and I'm going to go back to the campaign structure. And you know what's really funny about um, the campaign links and everything is a lot of the UI actually has gotten worse over the last two years inside of advertising. So if you're always like clicking around and getting a little confused, like where you should click, 
you're not alone. Even I struggle sometimes. All right, so, so to fix mistake number two, I'm gonna create a new advertising campaign and I'm gonna grab that ASIN and I'm gonna set up a one-off uh, keyword. So this is gonna be targeting uh, two by four exact, or we'll go phrase match on this. And <laughs> manual targeting, keywords, and then enter list. What I really wish they had was like a little filter right here where I could like, you know, see what's in the list there. And unfortunately we don't. So we're gonna hit enter on this list. Now the question is, is like, what is the most common two by four language that I want? So I'm gonna start typing into Amazon to see what comes up. Two by four shooting base. Uh, let's see what Amazon results look like. Yeah, that's solid. So we'll do two by four shooting base. That's, that's really good. And then maybe two by four target stand. That looks good. And what other iterations might there be? So two by four target, let's see what else comes up. So target stand nailed it, target base. So maybe, maybe going a two by four target base as well would be good. Sometimes the phrase match actually would target that anyway. Uh, from the stand to the base, which is kind of an interesting thing on its own. Um, okay, whoops, I put it in the wrong box there. Shoot. <laughs> Enter list, here we go. Try this again. Keyword targeting. All right, so two by four, two by four target stand, two by four target base, two by four shooting base. Is that what we started with was the shooting base? Okay, add keyword and boom, done. The so shooting base has no volume behind it, but these ones do. So this, this campaign I predict is going to perform phenomenally well because we're hitting the right one. Now with new campaigns, I recommend fixed bid. So we'll do that. And here we go. Daily budget. I'll throw a hundred bucks at this. I'm so confident in this one. So hundred bucks a day, no problem all day long. So boom, that's how I fixed mistake number two of not adding negations a week. And what we found was, is the nomenclature being used in the keywords uh, for this particular product had a problem. And then we went in and segmented it further to resolve that tension. So the next mistake we're gonna go, mistake number three is turning off old campaigns and making all new campaigns. This is something that frequently happens when you switch a PPC partner, or you make a new PPC hire, and they're like, well, I gotta show myself. I gotta, gotta make all new campaigns and prove that it's all us, it's not you. And that's a big fallacy because those campaigns will perform significantly worse. And I've seen this time and time again over the last decade, that when you make brand new campaigns, they take at least three weeks to come into themselves, right? Even if you made zero bid adjustments, don't do that. But even if you did, it takes three weeks and then the ACoS will lower seven, 10 points all on its own. And that's because Amazon needs that data to see some sales because you need sales to get sales on Amazon. I know it's weird. So instead of destroying all of the old campaigns and their naming conventions might be terrible, right? And I understand that. Co-op them, rename the structures and fix any of the issues, maybe they put a hundred keywords in one campaign. I get it. Save the best five or 10, segment the rest. Maybe they put 17 products on that campaign. Cool, no problem. If it's still a good campaign, segment it down to one or two products and then segment the rest, right? So don't just automatically butcher, throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak, when it comes to old PPC campaigns. So I, I, I even had a client the other day who called me and was concerned, he's like, hey, we're still running campaigns from five years ago. Are you guys doing your job? And I'm like, yeah, that's actually a pretty good example of us doing our job because you'd never want to turn off something that's works, right? Like that's, I mean, mistake number one was never negate a good keyword. Mistake number three is like never negate a good campaign. <laughs> don't do that. It's it, don't turn it off. It's bad. All right. So this brings us to mistake number four, which is limiting campaigns by budget instead of by bid. And, and so if you log in, we're going to X out of that filter there. And I'm going to sort this by spend because I want to see something right there. Boom. So you see how this one's out of budget. 
Now, if this has a bad A cos, then what we'd want to do to fix this, so it's at 56% A cos, which is uh, really bad. And this is on our Salentite wands. Um, and we, we were actually thinking about discontinuing these because we were struggling with them. And, and so I'm, I'm just curious, let, let's look at the last seven days. Did the A cost come down? Oh, it got worse. It got worse. How about last 30 days? It's, it's not a good situation. Okay. So I can understand why we have a budget getting out of cap here. However, it is far better to um, try and limit the ACOS by lowering the bid and maximizing the budgets because at time of shooting this, it's 2.25 p.m. And, and as you can see right here, what the frick, we're bidding $1.50, right? If, if I was like, oh, I'll just lower the budget and I didn't go click in like I just did to look at the bid, WTF, why are we at $1.50 on that, right? Like I'm actually gonna like take a picture of this and talk to my PVC specialist because I'm like, what the heck? Of course we have a high A cost. Like what's going on here? Seriously, that's so bad. So, uh, and, and by the way, management tip, always QA your employees, right? Like this is a case example, right? And so we're gonna go back down to the 35 cents and I guarantee you the A cost of this campaign next week will be under 55% and it's currently at 79. So bad, uh, so bad. So don't just limit bad campaigns by budget, lower them by bid to fix issues like this. Okay, tip number five is gonna be how CTR and PPC are married friends, right? And we're, to do this, we're gonna go to our CTR guru, John Aspinall. Now, if you haven't followed him on LinkedIn yet, I highly recommend it because this dude is making a CTR post, click-through rate post every single day, right? Until you die, you wanna see a CTR post until you die? Every single day, that's the guy to follow, John Aspinall. So look over here, this is the root main image. Now, technically this is a okay image, but how could we make this image better so that our PPC starts selling for cookie sheets? Well, let's take a look at the after. Cookie and baking sheets, three set, and then throw in some cookies right next to it. This image right here is so much better than the last one that I would predict that if we put this image on a live product, it would 3X the CTR. And I cannot tell you how awesome this picture is. Like if we go in, so you can see that there's a little crease right there. Like in Canva, John Aspinall did this in Canva to make the main image better and even put a little crease in there so that we could trick the bots in just in case, right? But you've seen some of my other CTR videos. We talk about how it's, it's a must have. And when it comes to PPC, you have to update the main images to generate more clicks because if you don't, you're gonna lose clicks to the competitors and you're gonna pay a higher PPC because Amazon doesn't wanna show your ad unless you pay higher. So that's why it's tip number five and so important. That's my five tips, but don't wait. Hold on, there's a bonus tip, and that is never go out of stock. This is the cardinal rule of Amazon, and rule number one is kind of like rule number two. No, seriously, never go out of stock, because if you go out of stock, your PPC shuts off, and when you get a returned item, your PPC kicks back in, and then it goes, your ACOS shoots up, and then you're out of stock again, and then your, ACOS, your PPC turns off, and it really messes with the PPC structure in the campaign. So never go out of stock, buy a year's supply. The, the concept of just-in-time supply chain management is totally dead. I, I, I dubbed it dead like four years ago. And, and you really gotta keep things in stock to make sure your PPC is working at its very, very best. So that's my PPC video today. All of you advertising gurus, you wanna help me rank this video on YouTube, do me a favor, in the comments section, write, top five PPC mistakes or top five Amazon advertising mistakes. You'll do me a big favor and you'll help me rank up on YouTube. Thanks for watching.